Tonight's the orchid show. Fish food on my hands. Very excited about that. I'm making sure to go ahead and give the fish a lot of food. Just feeding them pellets today. I used to give them rapashi, but I haven't been able to get it from my vendor. But I don't like feeding them pellets, so I need to start mixing it up a little bit more. I also give them occasionally some nori and sometimes broccoli, but I prefer for them to eat what they would actually find in water. Uh, broccoli doesn't grow in water, so, well, you know what I mean. So, I need to go ahead and give these guys a soak. Excuse me, excuse me, I'm talking, I'm talking. Sampling music. Uh, yeah, give these guys a soak, and I'm going to go ahead and water, because I want to bring the humidity up in here, because I'm bringing orchids home tonight, so I'm going to want them to come home to a nice, moist environment. And, uh, yeah, that's that's really just kind of the beginning of that. I will be vlogging at the Orchid Show somewhat. It depends on how crowded it is and whatnot and how awkward or outgoing I'm feeling. It's just, it's weird vlogging in front of other people. Uh, but yeah, okay, so I don't, I don't know. It's time to just water plants and give these guys a good soak. Here we go, on our way to the Orchid Show. All right, so full disclosure, it's actually the next day. I went last night with my friends and we were kind of pressed for time because some of the vendors, it takes a really long, long, long time to get your orchids and pay. I did pretty much all my orchid shopping last night, but it's to my understanding from the past couple years, I've gone and mentioned that like, this selection was a little bit different than years past and people who were going on the Saturdays and Sundays were mentioning that they thought that it, it was pretty good. So I, I'm going back just to have another peek at things. And when I filmed the Orchid show, which came out today or a week ago for whoever's watching this or maybe a year ago, I don't know when you're watching this, but oh, 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 my tripod's fallen. Hold on. So uh, what was I saying? Oh, so I filmed the Orchid show, but when I was there, it was a member's preview night of the uh, orchid nights where they light it up at nighttime for people to come and have like wine and cheese and be fancy while they look at the orchids and it was pretty but it's a whole different thing during the daytime when it's light out although it's kind of a gloomy day so maybe we'll take a peek in there depending on how crowded it is because uh it's saturday and it's this is the premiere of the orchid show so it might be pretty jam-packed in there and I, I may not be feeling it but we will see this place is absolutely packed okay I may have overreacted it took about two seconds to find a parking spot and there here we go maybe gonna vlog in front of lots of strangers not nerve-wracking at all. Oh, Here we go. the size of this Lelio.
know the answer to that until I edit this. I had a good time, met some cool people. TD Moore was there. TD, so nice to meet you. The really nice guy. You guys should check out his channel if you haven't. I'll link it below. And I picked up a few more small things that I didn't see yesterday. And you guys will have seen those by now. So that's what that is. Moving on. So this is my second attempt at this. I just pulled up to the wrong side of the pump. And now I feel like an idiot. Have I done any vlogging at my actual house yet this week? Well, ran out of orchid bark, so I need to see if they have anything in here. All of the nurseries are closed, so Home Depot's gonna have to do. Ah, shit. Ooh. <sighs> Michaels. All right, I'm not crazy about fake plants, but this stuff's not a bad idea, especially if you're making gifts for friends or something who maybe don't have a green thumb. Oh, pretty cool. Uh, there's something I haven't seen in years. All right, that was a very successful shopping endeavor. Ah, I forgot to turn the fan off. Wow, I just did a lot of recording and the camera was paused the entire time. So I don't even know where I, what I was saying. I got the Pylocerus Caesarius here. These are the blue looking cactus that you see on eBay sometimes and they're like a beautiful cerulean color. That's not really the reality with these, but they're cool. I'm not crazy about the paper flowers, but is what it is. Over here, this is Echeveria, who are you? Doesn't say, this is just an assorted Echeveria, but it has some flower spikes on it, which is fun, because I like their flowers. This here is Cressula ovata, Sedum, or I'm sorry, Cressula candy cane, which I know looks terrible, but I love the color, so I got it anyways, thinking maybe we can save it. This looks like a Sedum firestorm. Yep, Sedum firestorm. This is Sedum vera higgins. Vera Higgins, right there. A really, really cute painted lady Echeveria. It's got lots of little pups in it and moss, which I find is interesting. And up here we have, this is, Ech no, Sin this is the Golden Glow Sedum. There we go. I love the foliage on this. It, it looks so pretty and succulent because, you know, it it is a succulent, but it's so luminous the camera doesn't even want to pick it up all the way and then here is a balloon cactus which is the natto cactus magnificus there's its label down there and a couple of calenchoes calenchos i don't everybody says it different just a couple of those so got those succulents i already you know i have a lot of succulents but they weren't looking great after that cold snap we had a few weeks back so I went ahead and picked up some fresh ones I'm going to be using in some videos coming up here fairly soon. Alright, and here's the container I keep my fairy garden stuff in. What does that mean? It means I just left Michael's and I got some fairy garden accessories. First off, got this bag of fake moss-covered stones. Thought those are really cool. Got a really cute little fairy garden beach ball here. I think you guys know what we're going to be doing with this, right? It's going over there. And then I got a pack of these cute little beach accessories. I'm not going to be using all of these, but I particularly liked the seashell and the starfish. Glad I got those. Oh, and I also picked up some terracotta pots at Home Depot. You know, I got all these new orchids, but I, they're not, it's not really the right time to plant them. It's not really the time to repot them, but some of them are really top heavy, like the Cycopsis. I just wanted to get those pots so I could set them in something a little bit more sturdy to help keep them from flopping all over the place. All right, and I got a jar with some white rocks in it. You guys remember this guy? Yeah, he's not looking great. Now, there's a few reasons for that. One, I knocked it over with the hose. And two, it lost a fair amount of dirt. So I need to top this off. And the sand that was in here, I decided I don't like that sand. It was really pretty. But I, it was really hard to water this guy. And these palms like to be watered fairly often. 
so it just wasn't working for me. It's part of the reason this guy's not looking that great because I wasn't watering as much as it needs because watering was a pain in the butt. So I think the white rocks will be just fine. It looks a little bit like pretzel salt though. Mm, just gonna have to get past that. So I was actually just gonna go to the pet store and buy some white aquarium gravel, but I was at Michael's anyways and everything I bought was on sale. I got some pretty cute pots too. They're over there. Um, so I just went ahead and got it while I was there. Yeah. Gonna top this off with some dirt and add some frock. Alright, tell me that that doesn't just look like pretzel salt. Maybe I'm just hungry. Alright, now I'm gonna go ahead in here with my snippers and try and tidy this up a little bit. Alright, now that's far from perfect, but since this is still a seedling, I don't want to prune it too much, so this is fine. It'll do for now. And go ahead and start sticking some things back in here. I need to find a way to clean this chair off. It got kind of dirty. Like whoever was sitting in there had some pretty intense back sweat or something. I don't know. I'm probably just clean with a little bit of Lysol. And come back in here with our little bucket. Like so. Oh, margarita glass is pretty dirty. Alright, so the only problem with this now is now the sandcastle really doesn't go in there. So I might take that out for now. So here we go with our little starfish and our seashell, like that. Oh, my ball fell off the table. There we go. I mean, I'll still use some work, but definitely looking better. I like the pop of color here from the beach ball. Pretty cute. Man, that chair is nasty though. I'm gonna have to clean that up in a bit because that is going to drive me crazy. Okay, I just finished filming this video that will come out a few days ago. And, uh, there is glitter everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, they came out cute, so that's alright, but, I mean, it's just everywhere. I really like how these came out. Now, you guys let me know, what do you think of the one I did if you saw that video where I used the fake plants? Because as much as I didn't like the principle behind it, uh, it's because I like life plants, the more I think about it, like, in my memory, it looked pretty cute. Fake, but cute. I don't know, but I'm happy with these for sure. I'm happy. I've wanted to do this for a long time. I've had these mugs for several weeks, so I was waiting for the right time. And, uh, yeah, that's fun. And we'll have fun doing more things with these, probably, because this isn't going to last for too long. Probably six months to a year. Yeah. That was fun. I'm having fun planting things. I have missed gardening so much. I'm ready for spring. Also, is it bugging anyone else that I had the two circle pots right there and the tall one back there? It was bothering me. There we go. I fixed it. That is so noisy. I went ahead and I've just been leaving the pump that I use to water my plants running because, you know, just helps add extra oxygen. Wow. Adds a lot of sound. Normally the water level is a little bit higher so it's not making noise, but the water level drop because I was watering. So sorry about that. Uh, I'll try and adjust it real quick. Alright, see, and there's the problem. The pressure is so strong that if I extend it out too much, the it actually pushes the hose up. I can push it down, but it comes back up. So I'll just have to top it off later. But it is early in the morning. Came out here and there were things knocked on the ground from up there already put them away. It's like, that's kind of weird. And I noticed my staghorn fern's missing. It used to be back there on the shelf. And now I think it's back there under the water. And it looks like one of my little Vanda seedlings fell down there too. So there's an animal in here. I know that there's at least a couple tree frogs out here. So that could have something to do with it. I, I don't know though. Hopefully that's what it is. Uh, everything that was knocked over was from up high, so a bird. I don't know how a bird would get in here. I feel like I would notice or hear something. I haven't seen any signs of rodents, so I'm going to chuck it up to some tree frogs. That's, that's what I'm hoping. I need to get those out. And then when I'm done with that, well, I'll explain that after I fix this. Got my claw here. I know that may seem unnecessary, but this pond's almost six feet. It's a six foot square, just about. It's like five and a half, maybe five and a half feet. So I can't quite reach the back of it from the front. That's why I have the claw here. All right, there's my, there's my Vanda. You just hang out there for a moment. Don't fall. 
Looks like there's a plastic pot. Yep, that's the pot that the staghorn fern was in. Dump that out. I'm just gonna keep you right there for now. And then I think I see some foliage. Let's see if I can't grab a leaf or something and pull that out. Man, I hope this doesn't get dirt all over the inside of this thing. It probably will. There we go. And there's the staghorn fern. Poor thing. Well, uh, that's not going to need to be watered for a while, that's for sure. Hopefully it doesn't rot from being in there for so long. It does look like a hefty amount of the dirt got pulled out of there, which kind of sucks. That's going to be a pain to clean out of these pumps, but is what it is. And this was potted up, I think, in just like moss, which really isn't the best thing for the staghorn fern. So yeah, maybe it's best. Now I just need to dry this guy off. Humidity is pretty low, so hopefully it'll be okay. But yeah, I'm not going to be watering this for a while. In fact, I'm going to move it to a spot where it's not going to get hit by the hose when I'm watering the other plants, just to be safe. That's right. And I got the vandas down for their morning soak. These are getting really heavy, and I haven't added anything to it, so that's a good sign. It means that they're really taking in their water and gaining mass. So I'm not going to complain about that. They're very well hydrated. I'm not having to soak them for very long. Generally, you want the roots to green up fairly instantaneously when they get hit with water. That's a good sign that they're well hydrated. It shouldn't take too long. If it takes, you know, a few minutes for them to turn green, then... It, you need to step up the watering game. That's happened to me plenty of times. You can see I just lowered this down and they're already greening up, so that's good. So now I need to come in here to my Eureka palms and thin them out a little bit. I like to be able to see through them. It's better for airflow for the entire space and uh, so I can see my orchids. I don't like not being able to see the orchids over there. So I'm going to do a lot of pruning. And there's some branches that are hanging down over there that hit me in the face and drive me crazy. So I'm going to do that. And really the banana should probably get some pruning too. Yeah, I'll probably do that too. Fun. Always have to be doing pruning in the middle of winter. It means things are growing and doing well. That's, that's a good thing. Done with that. This is everything I pruned off. It is a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and put that away into the yard waste. So much. <sighs> It's good though, it needs to be done. Yeah, see, that's that's a lot of yard waste. Whew. All right, so that's done. It is a few hours later, so it's dark outside. So sorry, can't really tell how much better this is when the sun's not out, but, but thank goodness for editing. There we go, sun's out. You can see through here. Much better. I can see my orchids. Doesn't show up that well on camera, but uh, yeah, you just have to believe me. I, this is better. Much better. Okay, yeah, what were we doing? Oh yeah, editing a video. Back in we go. It's better. I can actually see through. I can see the orchid stands. I can see the light. I thin things out drastically up top. And it was raining mealybugs from the palm trees. So that was disgusting. Went inside, took a shower. I think I'm going to try a new systemic out here. I'm gonna try it on like some trio plants first, give it a couple weeks and then uh, see how it works and try it on some of my bigger plants. And we'll see how that works. Yeah, I can actually see through here now to my orchids, which is a huge improvement. I can even look back here and I see a spike on my sherry baby. It's a... Uh, Parsh that spike is partially bud blasted, unfortunately. I lost close to a dozen sherry baby spikes. Between I have several sherry babies when we had that cold snap. Just is what it is. I'm the orchids are fine, and that's really all I care about. They'll spike again another time. So that's done. Happy about that. Oh, I did some major pruning on the banana. Might seem like overkill, but really it doesn't need a lot of foliage and stuff in here. I Actually, what I need it to do is to be putting its roots down nice and deep so it has a strong support when summer gets here and it gets windy and I move it outside because every summer we have those winds and it blows the plant over. Not the pot, just the plant. It drives me crazy. So I do still need to come in here and sweep up. They made a big mess doing everything that I was doing, but there's a 
much more clear path. Succulents are looking okay. This light, the problem with these tables is there's a bar running through the middle. And that keeps you from being able to hang a light in the center. But I have this reflective material on the back. And I sort of angled the light a little bit. And that reflection seems to be enough for everybody. Everything's doing okay. So I guess that's working. I thought maybe I'd have to put another light. But I don't know. I guess not. Because they're looking all right. One thing I do need to do here at some point is I need to put a piece of plastic that hangs from here over here because when I water I just use the hose from the pond and I spray it through here to get everything and I do try and come through like every other watering and do it by hand to get a close look at everybody but these guys don't need to be getting wet this time of year they're okay being dry so I need to rig something up I have an extra zipper from the zip doors and I was thinking about putting that here and putting plastic on it so I can zip the plastic on and off kind of unnecessary but might be kind of cool I don't know we will see, but maybe from over here you can kind of see how much I thinned these out. I guess that since I didn't really do a before and after, this is all kind of all kind of pointless, isn't it? Yeah, oh well. And I did come in here and make sure to rotate this pot. I try and do about a quarter turn on it every week to make sure everybody's getting even lighting. This passion flower is really starting to take off. You can see it all the way over here. It was kind of attached to the uh, Vandas for a while, but that really wasn't working out, so I pulled it off. And I'll either swirl it around these support stakes here, or I'll let it climb up the palm tree. Really, it's a vine. I tend to just kind of want to do what it wants to do. It's going to head for the lights, so that's that. All right, and the last thing for this week is I'm just kind of doing some orchid stuff. Right here I have this Brassavilla Nidosa that I picked up from the orchid show last weekend. And, uh, you know, it was just a $10 division, and it I've been giving it multiple soaks to try and rehydrate it. And at this point, I can tell it really, I mean, this guy, it has, like, nothing on it in the way of viable roots go. So, we will see how this does. I am going to go through and prune off all the dead stuff, but I'm probably going to give that another week just because even though this stuff is dead... It's still acting as a sponge to hold some moisture in around the plant. So I've been keeping this in here. I would normally, if I had any, put some moss in there because it's sterile. So it has a human environment to help encourage some root growth. And once those roots popped out, you know, an inch or two, uh, then I would pot it up. But I don't know if I have that much time. And I need this pitcher. So I may end up having to mount this onto something. Potting is going to be pretty hard without any rhizome clips. And up here we have some spikes. This is my Galeopetalum Parkside Starburst. It's a Zygopetalum cross. And it didn't bloom for me last year because last year it almost died uh, due to some freezing temperatures. And I managed to get one suitable out of it last summer. And uh, here, there it is. And it's it had some really small growths that it put out. But then it put out this big one late last summer, and not even late last summer, probably this fall. And now that's spiking, so I'm pretty happy about that. Because this was much bigger, I lost a lot of it. And it's not even, it's not potted in this pot. It's in a plastic pot, and I have it in here with the orchid bark. Just because it's the air's really dry. These guys like a little bit more humidity. So I put that bark in there. I can mist the bark down, help keep the humidity up around the plant without actually risking rotting or choking out the plant. So that's what's up with this guy. This is a beautiful orchid. It hasn't bloomed for me since 2016. So I'm excited and really happy that it uh, recovered and finally seeing a result from that. So that's pretty awesome. And you know, I think that's actually going to do it for this week's vlog. It was a pretty busy week with the Orchid Show and the Orchid Hall and all that fun stuff and some errand running, but ultimately, there just aren't a ton of projects or things that I need to do this week, which is fantastic. I kind of just can sit back, enjoy my new orchids, plan out how I'm going to repot them and when and what I'm going to do about that, and uh, just relax. It's, it's a nice, nice change of pace. Things have kind of started to settle down and able to enjoy things a little bit more and not feel quite as rushed and not feel like there's quite as much chaos going on. But on that note, 
Don't forget to like the video. It helps a ton. Subscribe. I upload multiple times a week. I'll put my social media stuff down below in the description. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you back. We can look at each other's plants and have fun plant nerd time. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. So, as always, keep on growing. Bye-bye.